Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Israel taking back its territory by force. The country's military claiming it's reestablished control of all communities now around Gaza two days after that attack by Hamas. And now we're hearing from Americans who witnessed all this horror. Good to have you with us at noon, everybody. I'm Jason Colthorpe. And I'm Rhonda Walker. We start with the conflict in Israel as the U.S. is sending military planes and ships to show support for one of America's closest allies. We're learning more Americans are caught in this crossfire. In fact, at least nine Americans are among the dead who've been killed, 700 total in this attack, many of them civilians. NBC's Alice Barr with the latest. President Biden has been in contact with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu navigating another foreign policy challenge for the Biden administration involving one of America's closest allies. As the full scope of the deadliest attack on Israel in decades comes into focus. This is an attack that I don't think anyone saw coming. The State Department confirming that at least nine Americans have been killed, with more U.S. citizens still missing. Lawmakers briefed on the rapidly developing situation. Americans who managed to make it out of Israel describing scenes of horror. There were rockets above us all day. Israeli officials say at least 700 people have been killed in what they're describing as their nation's 9-11. Israeli airstrikes now hammering the Gaza Strip after the ruling Hamas militant group in Gaza attacked Israel on multiple fronts Saturday morning, raining rockets into Israel, while Hamas fighters infiltrated, in some cases by paraglider, as this video shows. A music festival in the Israeli desert, one of their first targets. 260 people were killed here, many more taken hostage. As the hostage crisis unfolds across the country, this Israeli father desperate to find his kidnapped wife and two young daughters. They are babies, and my wife, uh, they are my only family. The Defense Department announcing the U.S. is sending military assets closer to Israel to deter any further attacks. While U.S. officials are not ruling out using the assets to help one of America's closest allies in its fight against Hamas. There are growing questions about Iran's potential role in this attack. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said he has not yet seen evidence that Iran directed the violence, but that Iran and Hamas have had a long relationship. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Another group of workers is striking with the UAW. Nearly 4,000 workers from Mack truck plants walked off the job this morning. And this comes as the strikes against Detroit's three automakers is getting close to one month. Day 25 today. Let's get to business editor Rob Maloney. He joins us now live as we follow the union's next move, Rod. Well, the next move is to continue talking and see if they can come up with a deal. And when you see Mac walk out like it did and not accept a tentative agreement, what it tells you is they're looking at these negotiations going, wait, wait a minute, they're going to get a whole lot more than we're talking about in this contract. We want more. And so the, contra the contract talks will continue today. They are continuing today. And uh, it's starting to look like they may be rounding a corner here. Uh, as we take a look at some of the, the line workers out here uh, at the General Motors parts distribution center where they've been picketing uh, for the past uh, couple of weeks here. Um, and what it says is that because General Motors was uh, willing to give the concession of the joint venture battery plants being under the national contract, even though there are no real specifics with that, that means a lot in the scheme of things. And in fact, it might speed up the negotiation, says Dr. Merrick Masters, who is the uh, automotive expert coming out of Wayne State University Business School. So let's hear what he has to say about that. I think they're within um, a distance, a, a, a close distance of closing a deal. I, I really think that if they were to buckle down and and say this is basically what we've got to have to get a deal, that the union could probably get more wages. They could probably get what they've already got with Ford and the key other things that the other two companies have given them as well. 
Uh, plus, if they added a little bit more for retirees, I think they'd be very close. And so we're watching the shift change here on the picket line out here in Pontiac. And uh, like Merrick Master says, he thinks things have moved along rather dramatically. There's still a lot to work out here. One of the things that we've just picked up from the Anderson Economic Group out of uh, East Lansing is that uh, there has been a lot of losses in the past 25 days. They're estimating that the direct wages lost were 579 million, direct three manufacturer losses at about 2.6 billion, supplier losses at a billion and a half dollars, and the dealer and customer losses of 1.26 billion dollars. So this thing's getting expensive. Expensive. It's hurting in many ways, and a lot of people out here now are standing next to the burn barrel because it's gotten chilly out here on the picket line. So we're staying on top of all of this, looking to hear more from all of the sides in this, and we'll certainly have more coming up on Local 4 News at 4, 5, and 6. Reporting live from Pontiac, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Yeah. All right, Rod. Thank you, Rod. A man is out on bond after police say he threatened someone with a gun while shopping at a grocery store. It happened on Thursday at the Kroger store in Bloomfield Township on Telegraph. Police say a man pulled a gun and pointed it at another customer in the store. Witnesses told police they heard the suspect threaten the victim. Officers arrested the suspect while leaving the store and recovered the pistol. Isaiah Anthony Ware is now charged with assault with a dangerous weapon. He posted bond after his arraignment on Friday. Police in Inkster are looking for a man accused of shooting his girlfriend. Investigators say 37-year-old Andre Williams Jr. shot his girlfriend in the neck in a house on Biltmore Street Saturday night. Police think Williams may still be armed and should be considered dangerous. If someone will shoot a family member or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they'll, they'll probably shoot anybody. So again, it's imperative we get this person off the street. Anybody who has information on his whereabouts asked to call police or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Over to Romulus, where the boil water advisory remains in effect this noon for much of the city. There was a drop in pressure in the city's water supply, which can lead to bacterial contamination. People in this area that you see shaded on your screen, south of Eureka, west of Inkster, and east of Huron River Drive, that is the impacted area. Repairs are underway, but folks in this area, neighborhoods, and also businesses should boil their water until further notice. A community funded grocery store right in the heart of Detroit's east side open for business now. Sunday Sunday was the soft opening for the store on Manistique Street. It offers fresh and healthy food options to a community that doesn't have immediate access to good quality food. The store's owner Raphael Wright was born and raised in that area and says a total of 500 donors and 500 investors contributed to the grocery store such an important addition to that neighborhood. International Day of the Girl is this week on Wednesday in Metro Detroit. There is a group that is dedicated to helping teen girls celebrate this week and learn at the same time. So every day this week, the Power of Girlhood is hosting assemblies at different schools across Metro Detroit to celebrate the International Day of the Girl. The group will focus on building a career online, navigating social media, cybersecurity, financial literacy. Their first stop is, was at actually Hazel Park High School earlier today and on Thursday they'll be hosting a virtual assembly on YouTube and will visit Southfield Arts and Technology on Friday. Last Thursday I heard someone say somewhere they said you know I wonder when fall's going to show up. <laughs> you like think they a, did? I'd like to have a few words with them right about now. <laughs> After being in 80s last yeah. Wednesday uh, definitely been plummeting with the temperatures so sunshine helps. Oh yeah, we went from August like temperatures to more like the start of November. It's been chilly out there. We're looking into downtown Detroit right now. We do have some of those clouds. Breezy is the story today. Breezy, windy out there, all those great adjectives. Well, another thing that we're gonna be seeing, a few showers in some places. I'm gonna tell you where in just a moment. Right now in Detroit, 52, 49 in Howell, 50 in Pontiac, 51 in Adrian. So we have more cloud cover as you go toward the north along I-69 and we start to see some cloud cover diminishing as we go over toward the west side closer and closer over toward Ingham County. Now this is what we're looking at. We still have the chance of showers getting into our area, especially up in the thumb this afternoon and evening. 
Metro Detroit, that chance for rain showers around us is going to be very slim. But the reason is that we have this low pressure system that is centered up here in Canada that is spinning very slowly. And you see those bands right there. Those will be drifting down into northern parts of southeast Michigan. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about this and the temperatures coming up in a few minutes.